All right, hello everybody. Today, I have a Patreon request, and that is going over my Palmetto State Armory 10 and a half inch pistol that I bought a few years ago, and uh, what I've changed on it, how it's been, uh, and things like that. Kind of a tip to butt, as far as a grand thumb reference. Uh, a tip to butt on this PSA 10.5 how it is several thousand rounds later so real quick I have had this for I posted the original like first 300 rounds or something uh, review video for it two and a half years ago something like that and uh, then I posted the thousand or two thousand round video for it uh, sometime later I think it was a thousand rounds and I was getting concerning wearing on the bolt. And of course it came shipped with a problem of its own, which we'll get into in a minute. But overall, over the last uh, around 8,000 rounds-ish, around 8,000 rounds, it's performed fairly well. However, as I go, I have needed to replace parts in it because they were either not to a standard that I liked or they were straight out wearing out and getting worse. So we'll get into some of that stuff here in a second. Starting again, tip to butt, this is the original M-Lock handrail that they had that it shipped with this BCM. Can't remember the name of it, but I can't, I can't remember exactly everything I had on this when I first got it. So some of the stuff may be different. Some of the stuff may be the same. Anyway, this BCM hand stop, I really like these BCM hand stops, especially for shorter rifles. It's got the flash can sound forwarding device that they put on this from the factory. It's fluted and all that. Again, original original M-Lock handrail. Uh, it's got the Streamlight TLR or Streamlight ProTac, the thousand lumen, uh, what is that, the HLX on it. Haven't had a problem with this. People had commented on the original video that the light was flickering and so, uh, I don't know, that apparently, that apparently was a judgment on me. Uh, it turned out that the tail cap had a little short in it and uh, Streamlight replaced it immediately without question. So great customer service there. Uh, it's got the Vortex Crossfire. Is that what this is? I can't remember. Yes, the Vortex Crossfire red dot on it. I love the red dot. It's a budget red dot that just keeps on going. I haven't had any problems with it. Uh, Top here, UTG 3X magnifier. Uh, if you, anybody's ever looking for a budget magnifier, uh, I highly suggest this UTG one. It's never failed me. It's been on this since day one and uh, got decent clarity, got decent, decent clarity. It's a little lacking on, uh, it's a little lacking on the uh, eye relief, but that can be worked with. Dagger Defense flip up iron sights. I put these on pretty much all my rifles. They are aluminum. They are aluminum spring loaded sights and uh, they work great, especially for budget sights. This is after all bought as a budget firearm. Uh, but I highly suggest those sights if you're looking for budget uh, backup irons. Of course, coming back to the back is the SBA3 brace. I did rip the original brace, ripped one of these ears off, and uh, SBA3, I actually made a video on it. I was so impressed with their customer service that uh, I, you know, I felt the need to make a video on it. They replaced it, no problem. SBA3, absolutely great company. There is a Blue Force Gear Vickers uh, adjustable sling on here. I put the BCM, I think this is the Mod Zero, the straighter one, uh, BCM grip on it. It came with the Magpul, whatever it's called. Uh, I can't remember the name of it, but it came with a Magpul grip that I absolutely despise. Um, I will say it a hundred times, I've never met a Magpul. Never met a Magpul product I liked. For the bolt and carrier, it is the Sharps, XPB 
the DLC coated bolt from them, Bolt and Bolt Carrier Group. Uh, really, really like it. It uh, was a needed change. The the Palmetto State Armory standard OE mil spec Bolt Carrier Group that came with it was trash, and um, I started getting some pretty serious wear on the bolt itself. Some, some, like I could actually catch my finger, my fingernail on the grooves and the wearing on the bolt after just a few thousand rounds. So uh, it's, I, I've often said to people that if you want a budget rifle, buy a PSA, gut it and put good stuff in it. And that holds true with this one. So I put an XPB bolt carrier group in it. The Strike Industries, uh, extended charging handle. Uh, it's my favorite charging handle. They're like 30 or 40 bucks. I put that on all my rifles as well. Put the 45 degree radian safety selector on there. The original safety selector was really, really tough, really, really gritty. Um, you really had to uh, go spend some time with bodybuilders to use that thing. So uh, this one is far far better and then the rave 140 uh, flat face trigger cassette you know drop-in cassette trigger that I put in recently I haven't done a review on it but I have really enjoyed this trigger over that polished they call it like a polished mil spec trigger that was in it to begin with wasn't a horrible trigger but it was fairly inconsistent and had the more rounds I put through it, the worse the trigger felt. So uh, this was also a much needed upgrade. Of course, you got all kinds of triggers you could put in it. One of my favorite single stage triggers is the BCM trigger. Uh, I think it's the gunfighter, whatever it's called, but uh, I put that in other rifles as well. Testing out this Rave 140, I really like it so far. Now I'll go down on the tailgate and I'll tell you about a couple of the problems I had. One of the big problems I had with this rifle uh, from the get-go. One of the things I forgot about here was I did put the Armaspec uh, captured recoil spring in here. I really like that thing. Uh, it's it, it really does the job it's supposed to do. Has a lot of uh, recoil management, recoil mitigation properties. So I really like the Armaspec uh, captured recoil spring. One of the things I had to do was sand the buffer tube end. Now, a lot of people would uh, said to me, well, why didn't you just unthread the buffer one, one turn? And the reason I had to sand it was because part of the buffer tube was protruding past this, past the, the ring for the, the buffer ring here, and was not allowing me to close the upper all the way to where I could actually function the gun. Uh, the gun wouldn't cycle. I could not I could not pull the bolt back with the charging handle because everything was so tight here and having to really jam down the upper onto the lower and things were out of alignment. So I had to sand 7 eighths of the buffer tube face and leave some of it so the detent would still work. Now I don't know if that was a problem in their casting here, in their in the machining of the lower, or if it was a buffer tube problem, I find it hard to believe it's a buffer tube problem, because the buffer tube seemed to be fine. I've compared it to buffer tubes that I have, and uh, everything was identical. So there was an issue with this particular casting that this was narrower likely narrower than what it should have been. Now again, many people said, why didn't you just turn it out one turn? Because when I did that, the detent would pop out. So that was a big bummer um, that, you know, I had to uh, fix it the day I got it. Now for the upper chamber and barrel, um, it's starting to wear out. Like I said, it's around 8,000 rounds ish now, which isn't very much. And I'm starting to get a lot of stuck cases. Uh, no matter how clean I have it, no matter how much I scrub, no matter how much I try to clean that chamber, I'm getting a number of stuck cases recently, which tells me that there's an issue. There's probably some degradation in the chamber and it is uh, holding on to both brass and steel case ammo. Um, I know a lot of you know that I shoot a lot of steel case and you're gonna say, well, it's just a steel case ammo. It's not just steel case ammo, it's with brass. 
brass ammo as well. So the chamber is starting to wear out in this. It seems to still hold decent groups at 100 yards. So the rifling seems to be okay, but the stuck cases means I'm going to have to change this barrel probably very soon. It is at this point the PSA fanboys come out of the woodwork and start trash talking me because that's all they've ever done uh, anytime I've said anything negative about Palmetto State Armory. This has been, I would call this a hobbyist rifle or pistol. I Really any PSA firearm is a hobbyist rifle or pistol uh, that if you do things to check their lack of quality control, uh, if you do if you do things to check their uh, lack of build quality, like check your gas block, make sure it's tight, stake your castle nut, do things of that nature, start lock tighting things. They're not a bad beginner rifle or hobbyist rifle. As far as longevity goes, again, uh, the chamber seems to be getting uh, quite a bit of issues, like I said, holding on to brass and, and uh, or holding on to cases. Uh, the internals, the internals are what they are. It's a budget rifle, so the internals are not going to be as, as high quality as other rifles out there. So your best bet is to either plan on replacing them in the very near future if you're a high volume shooter or replace them right off the bat. And then you have some mid to low quality spares to put in there in case your good stuff ever does break. So as an overall thing, I like it now that it is to the point that it's at. Uh, it was okay when I got it. It was serviceable when I got it. Again, sort of a low volume hobbyist type setup. Uh, something I would never rely on going into a conflict of any sort. But um, absolutely after changing out some of the low quality parts, doing some of my own QC and own work to it to ensure that it was a functioning firearm, things that they don't do in their in-house in there. Uh, for instance, this one, there's no way they test fired it. There's no way they pulled the trigger. There's no way they did anything like this before they boxed it up because it wasn't possible. You couldn't, right? I had to rip to just to even try to get it to cycle. So if you're thinking about buying something on a budget, it's one of those things where they have oftentimes incredible sales, but I will always you know, give a warning when somebody purchases them, go ahead and do it if you like, and especially if you can't afford anything else, but be prepared for anywhere from minor to major issues uh, with it, especially as you get into the higher round count. Lower round count, you're probably not gonna have any problems assuming it works when you get it. I know I'm gonna get eaten alive for even saying that it is a hobbyist or budget beginner rifle. I know I know the comment section is gonna be full of people, I have a billion rounds on my rifle. No, you don't. So if you happen to actually have a reasonably high round count on your PSA AR, um, good for you awesome I'm, I'm super glad to hear it keep running it do your thing uh, but for every one of you there's somebody who's had a problem I've seen many many problems with PSA rifles from gas blocks that were never tightened up to things being broken immediately missing screws things like that it's just a horrible 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 quality control issues so that's it that is my tip to butt Patreon request of the condition, what my 10 and a half inch PSA is right now. I will keep running it until it dies, and then I will let you know how it dies. Um, probably within the next few months, if things go well, I will be replacing the barrel uh, to try to mitigate those chamber problems that I'm having. All right, everybody, thanks for watching. Don't forget to hit, hit like, share, and subscribe. Hit that notification bell down below. Give me a thumbs up if you think I've earned it leave a comment, let me know. Let me know how much of a piece of shit I am for say, daring to say anything negative about Palmetto State Armory. If you wanna support the channel, hit up Patreon. That's down below, link for that down below. Also all kinds of affiliate stuff down below. Um, I do appreciate the support. I appreciate the support from my current patrons. You guys are awesome. Again, this was a Patreon request and there are more to come. Thanks for watching everybody. We'll talk to you later.